River's Rebuke. All attack. Down to one. I get to... Let the ring tempt me. I will... I will draw a fresh four here. Nice. Okay. What do you got, opponent? You're down to one life. Good game. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Today we're playing Sauron the Dark Lord in Historic Brawl. Sauron's been out for a while now, maybe even over a year. Um, but I really love this deck, and I've gotten a couple requests to do it again, so... I'm back at it. <laughs> Grixis, baby. Uh, so three generic Grixis. He's a Avatar Horror 7-6. Uh, the ward ability is insane. So in order for our opponents to target this creature, they have to sacrifice a legendary artifact or legendary creature. Um, now, since we're playing Brawl, everyone should have access to a legendary creature, but you can reread this as sacrifice your commander in order to remove this card. Not a lot of people want to do that. Um, so basically, Sauron sticks on the battlefield, which is what we want with a six mana commander. It's a lot of mana to spend. Last thing we want is to cast Sauron and have it removed immediately. Um, so Sauron stays on the battlefield and then has another ability. Whenever uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell, a mass orcs one, so that you can see the arc, the orc army token there on the right hand side. So we basically make a zero zero token, then put a plus one plus one counter on it. This thing gets huge. Every time an opponent casts a spell, we add another plus one plus one counter on it. So basically every time they cast anything, we grow this creature. Um, so it, it, it can get to a 5-5, five, 7-7, five, seven, seven, ten, ten pretty easily. Um, whenever an army you control deals combat damage to a player, the ring tempts you. So whenever we deal combat damage with our token, the ring tempts us. And whenever the ring tempts you, you may discard your hand if you do draw four cards. So a lot of text there I know, modern magic cards, right? There's whole novels on them. But this card is super sweet. Essentially it reads, the, the important things here are the ward ability, so it's basically hex proof for all intents and purposes. Um, we make a, a creature every time our opponent casts a spell or, or grow the creature if it already exists. And then whenever the ring tempts us, uh, we get to discard our hand and draw a fresh four cards. So well, let me give you an example. We have Sauron down. We birthday escape, right? Draw a card, the ring tempts you right? Let's say this is like, we have this card in our hand and some other card that we don't care about. Maybe uh, like a, a Feed the Swarm that's not relevant at this point, right? So instead of keeping the Feed the Swarm, which isn't helping us at the moment, we can Birthday Escape, we can draw a card, but then we trigger our ability with the Ring Tempts Us. So we can look at that card and then decide if we want to keep it. If we don't, then we can discard our hand, which is just two cards, and draw a fresh four cards. And we can do this every time the ring tempts us. And whether that's our orc army getting in with damage, right? Which the uh, the ring tempting us makes it unblockable if its power is low enough. Um, so Sauron's ability refills our hand over and over and over again, as long as we can get the ring to tempt us. And I don't have a ton of those effects in the deck. I have some of the better ones, like Inherited Envelope's nice little mana rock, Ranger's Firebrand's nice little removal spell. We already talked about Birthday Escape, right? It's not inundated with effects that do this, because we're not always going to want to discard our hand. But having like this one of these spells come along in the mid to late game when we were kind of running out of fuel, it's nice to just refill your hand, right? So this card does a lot of work, sticks on the battlefield. Everything else in the deck is kind of what you'd expect in Grixis. Counter spells, removal, uh, you know, card draw, and then eventually into our win cons, which are, I mean, our, our commander is a win con, but uh, Ashiok is a great one. We can take an extra turn, uh, draw some more cards, Liliana, <laughs> you know, maybe ultimate Liliana, make them sack all their stuff. Uh, return all their stuff to their hand, yada, yada, yada. Um, so I really like this deck, um, and I'm excited to play it again. Typical mana base, all the fetches and shocks, and a couple surveil lands and the uh, applicable triome. Um, a little bit of the value cards like Rivendell and Takanuma to help us out if we don't have anything else to do. But that's essentially the deck, so enough of me talking. Let's get right into it. Let's see if we can... Get some wins with Sauron in Historic Brawl. If you like this kind of content, subscribe. Make sure to leave a comment down below and like the video. If you have a deck that you'd like me to try, you have a favorite commander, join the Discord. It's in the description. You can go to the Request a Deck channel, say hello, tell me your deck idea, and I will probably make a video about it. Um, I've done it. In fact, I think the original video I made for Sauron was a request from a viewer. So join the Discord. 
All right, Grenzo. This is a tough one. However, we are in blue, so if we can counter Grenzo, then it's not as bad. Um, so typically the way this deck works is they ramp really hard into Grenzo because Grenzo is just a, a super good value engine. So, and they get to go first. This is not good. This hand is a little bit of a nothing burger. <laughs> I mean, Spiteful Bandage will eventually be good. Fiery Impulse doesn't kill their commander because I believe it's for, yeah, it's for toughness. So Bible Epiphany is a good eventually too, and so is Ashiok, but otherwise it's not, we're not really doing much. I'm afraid to mulligan though because we have like all the mana. Like we have, you know, in a three color deck it's hard to get all, the, all your mana fixed and we have all our mana fixing right here. I would really much rather see a counter spell in our hand. Oh, I'm so afraid to mulligan. Alright, we're gonna do it. Um, this is fine. This is actually a bit better. We still get to keep the Sublime Epiphany, which will be too slow, but maybe on a later turn. And then we get to Expressive Iteration, so I think we keep... And we get to ramp ourselves a little bit. Okay, so, let's... I'm trying to think. We need double blue, double blue. We need a lot of doubles. Let's go get the... Blue, um, blue black surveil land, or or we could just get Xander's Lounge and get it out of the way. Mm, and now uh, I think we should surveil. We really want to hit a counter spell before they get Grenzo down. Is it, yeah, let's do that. See what's on top of our deck. Orcish Bowmasters. It's a good card. It's a good card. Something we can do early, too. But... Against this deck... This doesn't draw... This effect isn't a draw effect. If, if, if Grenzo said, you know, draw a card or whatever... Um, then... Uh, what does it say? Random card from my library? Uh, yeah, sure. Take a random card from my library. Alchemy cards. Gotta love them. Dark Ritual is pretty nice into Sauron. Okay, so. Let's get our mana rock down. We want double black as soon as possible. We have all of our colors, right? Blue, red, black. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, what I was going to say is Grenzo doesn't have a draw ability, so Orc Orcish Bowmasters isn't like directly good against it. And when I've played against this deck before, they usually don't have draw, like a lot of draw effects because Grenzo is a value engine, right? So why would they put stuff a bunch of draw abilities in their deck? Okay, I guess we'll just express a iteration. Okay. One of them into your hand, one of them back in your library. So I think we put hand, library, exile. Um, we don't have anything to do with the mana, so let's not take the damage. I was about to say, so far they haven't ramped at all, but there you go. There's the ramp piece. So we're potentially looking at Grenzo next turn, and we don't have a counter spell, which is... A bummer. We can make them sack this Mind Stone if we really want to. That would slow them down. Yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we... So we have double blue, double black. We could surveil... Or mana fix. I think we're mana fixing is good. Let's just surveil. Fix the top card of our library. Uh, nope. Don't need a board wipe right now. And let's end Grass Rampage. So they can draw with this, which is what they'll do here for the value. But it still gets rid of their mana rock. And then next turn we have Dark Ritual Sauron. And just, each of them exiles a card from their hand. 
You may play lands and cast spells from one card's exile, okay? Resolve. What do we give him? I don't think we give him this. That's too powerful. We can give him Languish. Which would only affect their creatures and not ours. Okay. We could also hold this in Dark Ritual Sublime Epiphany. Because Grenzo's coming down next turn. The only issue with that, I, I, yeah, I wish I'd thought about that before because we could have played a tap land and then gotten Sauron down. There's no guarantee we're going to draw a untap mana source next turn. So that, so that plays a little risky because if we do that and then don't have any play to follow up with, or we don't have Sauron to follow up with, then it's kind of like we counter their thing and then on our turn do nothing. But I think I'm going to take the risk because the momentum swing will be huge if that's what happens. Okay, they don't go for Sara, or they don't go for Grenzo. Roll a d20 and subtract the number of cards in your hand. There's always zero or less. Discard your hand. <clears throat> Return a card random from your your hand. Draw two cards. Okay. I don't know if I care about that. <laughs> well, we could draw negate. Sure. Tax me for two. Prismari command. So I think we play this tapped and then do what we said last turn. Sure. We can blow that up. Prosper. Hmm. Well, that's a good enough target. Counter spell, draw card. River Rebuke. Well, they're gonna they're gonna play Grenzo no matter what, so we might as well get Sauron down. Languish won't affect it. They might have a board wipe. Start massing orcs so we can rivers rebuke them. Now it is a little scary that they're heisting from our library. And we don't get to see it. Okay. Not the worst. Especially because it's going to go back to my hand. Act. Make Grenzo cost a little bit more. Is that your upkeep, right? Yeah, beginning of your upkeep, so. They can sack it to Phyrexian Arena. Or Tower. Phyrexian Tower. Okay, so do we attack him for nine? Is this an artifact? No, it's an enchantment. Okay. I think so. 
I think we just get in for nine. This card's a clock and a half. And like I said in the intro, they're going to keep growing my army because they have to keep casting spells. So we could discard our hand. Um, but I like my hand, so I'm not going to. I guess that's another thing I should have mentioned in the intro. This is a May ability. You may discard your hand. So we don't have to discard our hand. Worm Coil Engine. Okay. Weird that they didn't replay Grenzo. It's like the best card in their deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, I guess they didn't have another land drop. Kind of interesting. Pass. They're going to attack me? No? Okay. Uh, wait, hold on. Is this an artifact? It is. Okay. So, destroy target artifact. And then this. Thing death. Interesting. Okay. I wonder what happens there. Do they get the tokens and it comes back? do it like this. I guess I'm glad I did that because those cards are not good right now. Yeah, they get both. Pretty good. Okay, so. I think this is what we do. River's Rebuke. All attack. Down to one. I get to let the ring tempt me. I will I will draw a fresh four here. Nice. Okay. What do you got, opponent? You're down to one life. Good game. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> All right. Grixis our way through that one. Yes, Grixis is a word. I made it up right now. Yeah, Grenzo, all the alchemy cards are hard to fight against, but Grenzo is particularly hard because it's so much value for free every turn. So basically, if you're playing against Grenzo, you got to find a way to get that thing off the battlefield or not let it resolve at all, ideally. Valgavoth, okay. Another terrifying ward creature. However, it's nine mana, so it's going to be a bit before it comes out. I have a couple Valgavoth decks that I've uh, built recently, so if you're interested in that, check them out. I think this is good. We get to go first. Treasure map's nice. We have big mana spells, but treasure map will get us three treasures and a land to flip, so I think I'm okay keeping the big spells and then the one removal spell. We can mana fix with Verdant Catacombs. And I think since we're going first, we'll just go get the Triome. Just just uh, fix our mana right away. Let's not mess around. Shaman Gas. Uh, I think we just treasure map here. Black can't really interact with artifacts, so it's not like it's at risk of getting removed like our Mindstone did in, our, in the last game, or whatever it was. It was the Cold Steel Heart, a ramp, a ramp artifact. Okay. I think we pay two life here and pass. And then we'll hold up a braid and we can uh, scry. Scry with treasure map. I don't really want to kill this because it's going to give him a treasure. And that'll help them get Valgoth down one turn faster. So I'm just going to let them hit me with the 1-1 one, one for a little bit. Necropotence. Yeah, that's a good one. 
There's nothing we can do, so resolve. Let's see how much life they take. Just one. No. More. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, they take two. One, two, three, four, five. They're just refilling their hand. Uh, yep, took the land. Uh, we don't need this upkeep stop anymore. Okay. We'll probably just big score. It's too bad this isn't enchantment removal, but <laughs> that would be weird in, in red. Each player discards a card. Sure. Happy to help, but I'm taking the credit when we win. Well, that doesn't happen until your end step, so you're st it doesn't change anything. And you won't know what the cards are. <laughs> okay. I think they figured that out. I think they were trying to fill their hand and then do the discard effect, but that's not the way Necropotence works. Uh, sure, buddy. You can, you can draw as many cards as you want. In fact, you can draw 21 cards if you feel so inclined. Um, let's do... Let's see. We got blue, blue, black, black. We have everything. So let's just get more blue and black because those are the two colors that are um, most prominent in our deck. And then let's big score. Make two treasures. Get some more options of things to discard. We can also treasure map. Yeah, I think we will. And we'll just see what's on top of our deck. That way we make we make the best decision about what to discard here. Jawari disruption. Okay. So let's discard this land. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather. Since we're drawing a land. Play the land. Goldspan Dragon. We sack our treasure, but we're going to get a treasure back. Kill their Liliana. Isn't how things were supposed to go. On their turn, we can sack the treasure map, make three more treasures. Or, uh, not sack, we can sack, we can, um, flip the treasure map is what I'm trying to say. And maybe resolve a Sublime Epiphany because Goldspan doubles all of our treasures. Curse Marauder. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Auto pay. Malachar Rebirth. Malachar Rebirth. I think we should probably keep that based on how much sacrifice stuff they have. So we'll keep the Malachar Rebirth. Make three treasures. Sublime Tiffany. Counterspell. Target non-land permanent. Target creature. Us. Make a treasure. <laughs> yeah. So we were going to make a second gold span. We were going to uh, counter their sacrifice ability. We were going to put Necropotence back in their hand. It looks like they didn't have enough mana to recast it. And I'm not sure how two gold spans work, but I don't know if each treasure now adds four mana. But... Um, Either way, two Goldspan Dragons making two treasures every turn, and even if they tap for two, that's insane. That's insane ramp. Um, next turn we could Seagate Restoration, or obviously we could Sauron if we wanted to, and they're way behind on trying to get Balgoboth down. Yeah, I really love this deck. I feel like it just has so many answers and lines um, 
One thing I really don't like is when I'm playing a deck and it's super narrow. It's like... I'll use it as an example, but it's not... It's not the only deck I feel this way about. But, like, if you're playing a big ramp deck where it's just, like, you spend the first three or four turns, ramp, 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 and then you play your big thing, it's like, all right, that's fun maybe once or twice, but there's no, like, deviation from that, right? Like, you just have to play that way in order for the deck to work. This deck is, like, you could take a million different avenues, and you really have to, like, think about your decisions. So if you're that kind of player, I think this is a, a cool deck to, to try and play. Joda, Super Scary Legends Commander. Another one that we basically just don't want to resolve. Um, they get to go first. We have Dark Ritual and Black Mana to cast it. Um, reduce our instance and sorcery so Time Warp costs one less. Liliana could come down pretty early. We technically have three lands. Ugh. This is a weird hand. I would prefer there be a counter in it. But I think I'm gonna keep it. I'm just gonna hope it works out. Um, we don't have a turn one play, so might as well get the tap land down. This is also a tap land, but... Okay. Hmm. <laughs> well, I think we gotta get this down. I'd like to play Baral on curve, but... I'm just steady, sure. Okay. We'll pay the one here. Our opponent does not need extra cards. Joda might be coming down right here. There we go. Alright. So. We can Liliana and make them sack Joda. And their uh, mana creature. We could take an extra turn first though. So why don't we do that. While we have Baral giving us the discount. So what do we need to go get? Untapped land. We don't have double black yet. So maybe like a black red land? No, we can't with this. So blue black. Maybe maybe uh, blue red for gold span. Oh yeah, so, time warp. Moi, we'll let them draw a card. No attacks, not into the 6-6. Six, six. Okay, I believe we have a swamp, right? Or an island? Island. A uh, mountain. Yeah, okay. Untapped. Dark Ritual. Um, do we pay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Yeah, we'll still have enough. So, resolve. Auto pay. We don't pay for that one. Because <laughs> we cannot. I do hope you make this we'll draw a card off for all dying. And that puts them way behind having Joda out. Next turn we can Sauron if we want. Or we can Gold Span. Okay. Putrid, but effective. Destroy all non-legendary creatures. Super awkward against this deck, because it's all legendary creatures. Okay. They missed a land drop. Did you guys notice that? They missed a land drop. I 
I think we just get Sauron down, honestly. Let them draw a card, but... Now their deck, if they have targeted removal, they have a bunch of uh, legendary creatures they can sack, but... So Sauron's not as good against this deck as it is against the typical deck, but... It's still very good. Well... <laughs> I wanted to take my turn opponent. I was going to Cavern of Souls, uh, probably attack him with at least Sauron. Um, Seagate Restoration, draw a bunch of cards, make a zombie. Yeah, we we're doing pretty good. See who we get next. Vadric. Is this the... I think this is like a... He reduces the cost of instants and sorceries based on his power. So it's a pretty good deck. If it's neither night or day, it becomes day. Instant sorcery spells cost X less to cast, where X is Vadric's power. Yeah. So uh, is it Spell Slinger? Uh, basically another commander that just can't stay on the battlefield, otherwise it's insane. Uh, they get to go first, which is unfortunate. And they put plus one, plus one counters on it. Which makes this worse. Um, this hand is really slow against this commander. It's only three mana, right? Yeah, we kind of need an answer right away. Especially if they get to go first. Feed the Swarm's an answer. Spell Pierce is nice against them. We have mana. Alright. We'll rock with this. We will try this out. Disdainful Stroke's also nice. Not against their commanders, against future stuff. Um, two or more other lands. Okay. Well, we have no other play, so let's get the Bloodstain uh, or Malakir Mire. Yeah. Malakir Mire. Okay. Holding up mana for something. I'm just gonna Cold Steel Heart, and if they want to counter it, that's fine. Get a counter out of their hand. We'll go with red, since we don't have any red mana right now. We'll have double black, double blue, and double red. They don't play their commander. Hmm. Okay. Scalding Tarn. Uh-huh. They're going to surveil. So we have lots of things we can do on their turn. We can Disdainful Stroke, we can Big Score, we can Spell Pierce, we can Cling to Dust. We can do a couple of these things together, depending on what they play. So if you want to have a staring match, we can have a staring match. But I'm assuming you need to get your commander down for your deck to work. They're touching my lands. You're gonna land destruction me? No, you're just gonna pass through the turn? Okay, so since they do this... So this is my advice. I know people hate playing against blue players, especially blue players that do this stuff, but if you're gonna play against a blue player and you're gonna beat them, the way to do it is to cast spells on their turn. So we're gonna cast a big score here, and that's gonna force them to make a decision of whether they wanna counter it or not, right? And if they do, fine, we get a counter out of their hand. If they don't, then we get the value from big score, but it forces them to use their mana on their turn. We will get rid of Cling to Dust, because it'll just go into our graveyard where we can escape it. Okay, they choose not to counter it. The other thing that you can do... So I think we'll lead with... Well, no, let's let's do it like this. Let's, let's be mana efficient, so... Oh, we have Sublime Epiphany on their next turn. Do we just wait? So my thought is, we can we can look in their hand, right? That's the other way to get around to blue players, is to look in their hand. Which they can counter if they want, but it still gets a counter out of their hand, which is probably what we would take anyway. So we can ramp and get this down, but then they can do whatever they want on their turn. That might be bad for us. But at some point, we got to take action, so...
they're not going to counter this. That would be a weird decision. But they might counter this. And if I was them, I would counter it. They do not. All right, so what do they got here? They got a counter spell, which they couldn't use because we could have paid for it. Mm hmm. Each player mills four cards, return up to two instant sorcery cards and over to your hand. Shuffle your library, the next level top credit library. Mm hmm. hmm, hmm. Mizzix Mastery. I think we definitely gotta get rid of Mizzix Mastery. So they have Quench, which we can play around. Um, yep. We don't want to go for the throw here because they could quench it. But we can go for the throw it on our turn. Or we can just hold up Sublime Epiphany. We can also Sauron, but they could quench it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, seven, huh? I think we just end the turn, which will flip day night, I believe, which is going to make them want to cast some stuff. <laughs> so I think we can get them with the sublime epiphany. I'm trying to bait them into it. Create a treasure token. Sure, we'll allow that. They still have quench mana up. So we'll, we'll allow this. We need them to go... We need them to tap out, essentially. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to try to go infinite here. Okay, so they're down to three mana. They got rid of Quench. Interesting. So there's a way that we can do this where we still hold up Spell Pierce. And I think this is the moment where we do it. Let's see your counterspell. You must have drawn another one if you got rid of Quench. Swan Song. Oh, they do have two though, but then they're tapped out. They do have two mana, which is a bummer. Create a bird. They make. Oh, they make two treasures. Yep, yep, they got around it. Well, I think they're just going to storm off here. We'll see, though. So far, they're, they're still not doing a bunch of stuff, but I'm worried about what they draw into. And we, um... We don't have a ton of mana. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Not the best. This is pretty good though. Get some more cards.
Alright, I think we've seen enough. Give him a good game, get out of here. Yeah, I, I think I had a window to win this game, and I messed it up. So, I'm just going to take the blame for that and move on. <laughs> but what I said is still true. You still want to pressure blue players on their turn. This one's just kind of a funky deck because they reduce the cost of all their spells, and then they use those um, treasure-making uh, cards that draw them cards like... Um, unexpected windfall and stuff like that and then because they're cost reduced they're mana positive and it's just kind of a the windows aren't the same so that's not a typical blue deck it's that that one's a little bit trickier i think if i could go back i would have just killed their commander and made them quench it something like that because at that time they didn't have any other options so that was the turn right after we had looked in their hand okay plus one plus one counter deck we're getting Sublime Epiphany a lot in our opening hand. Um, we technically have two lands. They're both tapped, and they get to go first. Actually, we have three land three tapped lands. Nah. No thanks. This is better. All right, that's a good one against them. I think we can surveil here. We need black. We have red, so we probably black blue. Yeah, I mean, removal's good against this deck, so I'm just gonna take the removal. That's a card draw engine, right? Yeah. So we'll. This comes into play tap pretty much no matter what at this point in the game, so we'll just get that down. This will come into play untap next turn. And we can um, go for the throat or whatever else we need to do. We'll, we'll have to kill this too because it's card draw for them. Thought seize. Okay. Okay, and then I think we just ramp here. I don't think we need to hold up go for the throat at this point. Renata, okay. Do you think they have removal? <laughs> Do you think they have removal? Is this... These are both even, this is even, and this is even. So maybe we just don't and we extinction event them? Maybe we set up even more. We treasure map, we let them play their commander next turn, and then we extinction event them. How about... If we're going to do that, we might as well lead with Thought Seize. Two lands. Perfect. Bristly Bill, another even mana cost creature. Yep, we're going to take six damage here, which is a lot, but we're going to exile their whole board next turn. Uh, okay, never mind. We're going to take four. Um, yeah, we'll take that. We don't have any lands in our hand right now. Um, we have, we have enough mana, so we can upkeep Scry as well.
just to get another counter on this. Yep, that's what we're getting. Draw. Main phase. Two life. Exile your whole board. Would you like to keep playing magic? Eh, credit to them, they do. Okay, so... Make the treasures. Um, and the ring tempts you. N not really helpful right now. What is this, Ward 2? Okay. We'll keep the treasures for now. If we need to disdainful stroke something, we will. How about no? Okay. <laughs> you getting a little sleepy, opponent? Put one of them into your hand, okay. Hand, library, command tower in exile, play command tower, pass the turn. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Okay, they're, I'll give them credit, they're, uh, they're not giving up. I would have definitely scooped by now. Mm -hmm. I don't think it really matters what we get. Maybe another black source. It seems like we don't have a ton of black mana. Uh, we can't target this because it has Ward 2, so let's not feed the Swarm this, but we can take a little off the top. Just a little. Just a little off the top. Just a little 4, then a little 2. Gwenna, make an Orc. Add 2 mana of any combination of colors. Spend this mana only to cast... Creature spells or activate abilities of creature sources. When you cast a creature spell with power 5 or greater, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter. Yep. Makes sense. What does it say? Whenever you cast a creature spell with power 5 or greater. Gotcha. Well, um... Let's just get rid of this before it gets too big for us to kill. So this is what we do. We want a fresh hand. So do this and this. Iconic Rift, that. Feed the Swarm, that. Attack all, let the ring tempt us, discard our hand, air quotes, <laughs> and draw fresh four cards. And this is kind of what I was talking about in the intro. Ooh, sweet life gain. Uh, that's a creature, so the rest doesn't work. Um, 
you know, at this point in the game, we're getting low on cards. Sauron's ability lets us draw a fresh four. We're not really, quote unquote, discarding our hand, right? We didn't even have a hand to discard. So whether that's a hand that has spells that you don't like or you don't have a hand at all, Sauron's ability, you know, with a little sprinkling of the ring tempts you effects in your deck will let you uh, get free value, essentially, in the mid to late game. Uh, well, they're they're kind of dead no matter what. Do we do the um, the BM uh, win and we just pass our turn and let them die on their upkeep? Death is on the stack. <laughs> Death is on the stack, opponent. <laughs> Alright, let's do... Actually, let's crack some packs. I always like cracking a couple packs. We can get We can get a couple more. So, uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the deck. Uh, we'll do a little a deck review in a second. I just want to get some more Duskworn packs. What can we get? Two of them? Okay. How you guys feeling about Duskworn? I think it's pretty sweet. I think it's pretty sweet. Oh, we're definitely making a deck out of the Jolly Balloon, man. This guy seems pretty nuts, too. Look at the art on this. So creepy. Oh. Sweet, okay. Deck review. So, not everyone's cup of tea, right? But if you're someone who enjoys uh, Grixis Control, um, I highly recommend this deck. I can't really recommend it enough. Um, I will say the, the thing that makes this, for me, like my favorite Grixis commander, you know, all the abilities, of course, but it's not often that you get a Grixis commander where the creature is important to the strategy um, and it stays on the battlefield. Usually it's like the creature lets you get a, you know, instant or sorcery back from your graveyard. It's like little value, right? It just happens to be in the Grixis colors. Um, this one actually stays on the battlefield and gets you tremendous value, right? And with the ward ability, it's really hard to get rid of, you know, the value with the, with the orc army that gets huge, the ability to draw fresh four cards uh, when you need to. Um, you know, your opponent casting spells grows your army, which has really funny interactions. Like if they try to shield Rid's edict you, well, because they, you know, normally that would work, right? Because it gets around the ward ability. However, with Sauron's ability, because they cast a spell, you actually make an orc army. So, well, actually, maybe Shouldred's edict is a bad example because they can choose non non token creature. Yeah. Bad example, but a normal edict effect, right? If they have a normal edict effect where they don't get to choose non-token or or uh, token creature, that wouldn't work because you make a creature with Sauron's ability. So it's just cool little interactions like that. It makes it even harder to get rid of, you know, on top of the fact that it's already really hard to get rid of. Um, and then it just stays on the battlefield. And like I said, it draws you four extra cards. It is a huge creature, you know? So like once Sauron comes down, you know, the, the, the first six turns of the game is like typical Grixis control, right? But then once Sauron comes down, it's like you're beating the opponent down, right? Like you're growing your big army, you have a 7-6, so it turns into like Grixis aggro, which is just, it's just a, such a cool play style, it's super unique. Um, but it still has that Grixis flavor of like, no matter what you do, you can't choose the right thing, right? You try to cast spells, we make another army, you know? You try to remove Sauron, even if you're able to, you have to sacrifice your own stuff, right? It's like you're you're damned if you do and damned if you don't with this card, which is all which is right up the alley of what Grixis wants to do to your opponents. Obviously, some of these cards could be swapped out for other ones. Like I think I'll probably take this one out. It's just not very good anymore in the current meta. I put in basically any other board white, blood on the snow, you know, whatever. Um, but all in all, I would. I, I would recommend sticking with this, you know, setup. I've play tested it a lot. I would definitely recommend sticking with this mana base if you're going to tinker with the with the deck. This mana base is proven to work really well. Three color decks are difficult, especially Grixis colors that can't ramp and mana fix, right? So I'd recommend sticking with this mana base. But otherwise, you can put your favorite pet Grixis cards in here, and it'll probably be good, right? This is the card that really holds the whole thing together. So if you like the video, subscribe comment down below let me know if you do want to substitute in other cards what you would substitute in um make sure to like and like i said in the intro if you're interested in having me try a deck that you like or commander that you like 
join the Discord. Go to the deck, uh, request a deck channel, and request a deck there. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.